everyone, it's Ivan, keepadger.com. Out of your day to talk about some of the most recent executive orders put forth by the Biden-Harris administration with respect to gun control and why kind of the underlying foundation, I would argue, is racist and attack on disabled people. Some of you are like, damn, bold claim. Well, stick with me. We'll get there. But set the stage beginning-ish of 2021, Biden-Harris administration put forth some executive orders. Now, to be fair, if we looked at kind of the scope of what they were looking to achieve, they wanted to save some lives. Super noble. Honestly, I think we can all get behind that. Who wouldn't want to be able to save lives from deaths that would otherwise be preventable? Very noble. So you're asking yourself, did they address the number one cause of death in America, heart disease? No, they didn't. Nothing to address obesity or people eating themselves into type 2 diabetes or anything along those lines. They basically set their sights a little bit lower, a couple rungs down with respect to the leading causes of death, and set their sights on violence. Keep in mind, not violence in that, hey, maybe we should address the root cause of this. Maybe have an uncomfortable conversation, maybe leading into mental health, something along those lines but instead just attacking a mechanism of violence. Mind you, not even like the most common mechanism of violence, like hammers or something like that, but a small subset, firearms, and then some of the stuff even narrower down into pistol braces, which honestly, with respect to statistics, pretty much comes in at statistically insignificant, if we're being honest about it. But that's where they decide to uh, invest their time and energy. And as a quick aside with respect to executive orders, honestly, personally, I think it's a horrible practice. Essentially used to circumvent the way we have it set up in our country to create laws. But no one really seems to have a problem with it unless their guy is no longer in charge. Then they usually take issue because they obviously lack the foresight to see that executive orders, or most anything else with respect to government, pendulum swings both ways, cuts both directions. But we ended up with some executive orders to include some that basically charged the DOJ and in turn the Department or Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives with redefining some terms with respect to pistol braces as well as some other things. And while Joe was at it, he went ahead and appointed this man to the head of the ATF, shown here, enjoying himself, reliving those glory days of burning women and children to death down in Waco, Texas. So that happened. Of course, some of you are like, Ivan, how can this possibly be racist? Well, let's look at kind of some of the motivation for pushing forward these executive orders with respect to gun control. Some mass shootings. And you're like, oh man, that's terrible. I agree. Horrible. 100%. And there were some pretty high profile mass shootings that occurred, basically. And then on the heels, here comes these executive orders. And if you're wondering, no, I'm not talking about Friday and Saturday night in Chicago. You're like, what? Oh yeah. All the mass shootings that happened pretty much on the rig in Chicago. Keeping in mind that Chicago, as well as kind of Illinois as a whole, some of the strictest gun control laws in the entire nation. Yet still they end up with all these mass shootings. Granted, we don't hear too much about it because one, well, let's be honest, nobody really cares. What do I mean by that? Twofold when people look at it. One, people are either like, well, I'm just not going to go to Chicago, non-issue, no longer a danger to me. Or two, they're like, you know what, I'm not a member of a gang, so I'm probably not going to end up involved in these mass shootings that regularly happen in Chicago. So people usually feeling pretty good, pretty safe about themselves. But what happens if maybe some people get killed in a mass shooting around like a maybe a high-end grocery store or maybe somewhere like a massage parlor or something like that. People start thinking to themselves, they're like, oh shit, like I go grocery shopping. 
Like, that could happen to me. Or maybe I want to go get a mani-pedi. Like, you mean I could get killed? Which is really disruptive to people's paradigm. Like, having to recognize that the world can be and is a violent and dangerous place at times. So no longer can you be involved in a mass shooting if you happen to be in Chicago and part of a gang. Now, like, it could potentially happen at a grocery store. Keep in mind, statistically, by every measurable metric, we are in, like, the best place ever with respect to mankind. Lowest cause of death, like, across the board, lowest instances of violence, all of those things. But all of a sudden, people's paradigm is basically disrupted, seeing that potentially they could die while going to the grocery store, especially a nice grocery store. Talk about paradigm disruption. And keep in mind also with respect to Chicago and then maybe a upscale grocery store, it does kind of point to whose lives really matter when we see legislation come at the end of one of those two scenarios, right? Of course, some of you are like, Ivan, what can we possibly do about Chicago? It's a lost cause. Apparently it is, because politicians, to include Joe, who's arguably been in office longer than a lot of voting age people who've even been alive, have yet to do anything meaningful addressing that violence there, on any meaningful level. Granted, some of it's probably hard to address because can't really just address the mechanism of violence? hasn't seemed to work. And also, on the other hand, it's kind of hard to legislate like, hey, like you have to have a father present. Number one indicator in people's criminal behavior. No father around. Keep in mind, raised by a single mother. So where do you go from there? I don't know. It's difficult. So it's a lot easier to just go ahead and throw some legislation out there, make everyone feel good, and hopefully kind of re-insulate that little bubble of perceived safety. As I mentioned, when it comes to mass shootings, doesn't really matter because, well, sorry, the people in Chicago don't matter because one, people choose not to go to Chicago or they're like, eh, I'm not part of a gang. But when it gets brought close to home and it can actually happen at like a nice grocery store, all of a sudden that strikes home. Why is this so disruptive? Well, honestly, because most people have outsourced their physical safety and security. What do I mean by that? Well, rather than taking personal responsibility for one's safety and well-being, and even on the most basic level, basically start practicing things such as situational awareness or scaling that up, something to the respect of actually being able to have the capability to defend oneself if you end up in a bad way. Rather than being able to do something like that, honestly, people would rather just rely on the police, which depending on where you are in the country, that may or may not work out well for you. And regardless, having been a police officer, I can say I ended up taking a lot more reports from people getting shot or stabbed than I did actually stopping those crimes while they were happening. But it's a lot easier to, honestly, just outsource your violence and your personal protection than it is to take responsibility for yourself. This, of course, creates that very big problem when you see that the world is, in fact, and can be a dangerous and violent place, and you're brought to the forefront of that realization, which is where a lot of people were when they heard about those mass shootings at that nice grocery store or at a spa. Which brings us to the attack on handicapped people. One of those executive orders basically charges the DOJ and ATF with creating essentially a stricter criteria for pistol stabilizing braces, such as those made by SB Tactical. The idea being behind those braces is to actually empower handicapped people to be able to go effectively shoot, whether it's in defense of themselves, just sporting, hunting, whatever it may be, basically being able to use something like a shorter AR pistol effectively through the use of a stabilizing brace in order to, as I said, 
defend themselves, go use it for sporting purposes, whatever it may be. But here's the rub. At some point, someone may or may not have intentionally used one of these stabilizing braces outside of its original intent and possibly on purpose rather than accidental contact while shooting said pistol, actually put it against their shoulder and attempted to use it knowingly as a stock, which through magic obviously turns it into a short barreled rifle. And because the government needs their $200 tax, they're basically missing out on money. And so that is illegal. So obviously within the eyes of the government, we can't have that happen and that needs to go ahead and be stripped away. What would be a good analogy? Well, imagine Joe Biden and maybe the head of the ATF just kind of lurking in like a dark corner of a bathroom and watching people come into the bathroom, go into stalls, come out, go into the bathroom, go into stalls, come out. And then someone goes, goes into that handicap stall at the very end and they walk in. And then after they use the bathroom, they walk out. Joe looks at his buddy and he's like, we can't have that. We need to get rid of the handicap stall. That way, no one can accidentally or purposefully end up using the handicap stall if they're not handicapped. That way the person can roll in on a wheelchair, throw themselves on the floor, and just crawl into the regular stall, because that makes sense. But Ivan, haven't these pistol braces been used in commissions of crimes? Yes, they have. Just like hammers, or cars, or any number of things. And these pistol braces happen to be, again, a fraction of a fraction of a percent but they're made scary thanks to media and because they're scary and because all of a sudden people's paradigm has been disrupted people have realized that the world can and is a dangerous place and rather than taking personal responsibility for one's safety we'll go ahead and outsource our safety and violence to law enforcement we obviously need something to make us feel better like let's make a lot to do that so that basically is arguably kind of what's in the process of happening right now. You have a law getting created by someone not empowered to make laws, i.e. the DOJ and ATF, basically tasked by Biden with creating some sort of definition that will ultimately end up making things legal or illegal. Never in mind, we actually have an entire branch of government dedicated to making laws who are actually made up of elected, not appointed officials, so they can actually be held responsible for their actions. But we're gonna go ahead and do this through the DOJ and ATF. Appointed representatives, well, not even representatives, just appointed people by Joe. No. And it really begs the question of, what is the issue here? Is the issue that potentially people are using something outside of its scope and they're committing all these crimes because statistically they're not. Or are they possibly using something outside of its scope? Not that I necessarily condone it, but is the bigger issue that the government's not getting a $200 tax for people maybe using something outside of its scope? I don't know. I'm not really sure. But let's look at how this will hopefully play out. Maybe the ATF will make a ruling which will turn into a law which will keep people from being able to use arm stabilizing braces, pistol stabilizing braces, such as those made by SB Tactical. Because if we look at the logical order of thought, basically it'll keep people safer. How would this possibly be? Well, you have someone getting ready to go on their like murder spree, go commit a mass shooting. They're thinking to themselves, they're like, well, I basically want the capability of a rifle, but I want it more concealable, so maybe I want a short-barreled rifle. But then they look and they're like, oh man, don't really want to go through the paperwork and pay a $200 tax stamp to the government to then go on the shooting. And then they're like, you know what? 
what about if I used a pistol stabilizing brace outside of its intended role to go commit this crime and kill multiple people? And then they're like, ah, oh, man, that's illegal. You know what? I'm going to just hang up my murder and spurs. I'm just not going to go commit this crime because that would be illegal to kill people with a gun equipped with a pistol stabilizing brace if I used it outside of its original intended design. Oh, well, moving on. That makes sense, right? Because keep in mind, all of these gun control laws are predicated on the idea that the criminals are going to follow said laws, which criminal by definition is committing crimes by virtue of breaking laws. It's stupid as hell. What will the impact of all this be? Hmm, nothing meaningful. Basically, it'd just be burdensome for law-abiding citizens and chipping away one more little piece at those Second Amendment rights put in place for citizens to defend themselves. Which is pretty messed up. Keep in mind, again, nothing meaningful done at all with respect to any violence. You're literally making another law predicated on the idea that the criminal is going to follow the law. That's not how this works. And in addition to that, you are taking away handicapped people's ability with respect to the pistol stabilizing braces to defend themselves, as well as just engage in other sporting purposes with firearms. And again, arguing, I think that underlying foundation of the push towards this super racist. No one's done anything meaningful for places like Chicago or other cities that have rampant crime and mass shootings pretty much on the regular. But when people maybe not of color die near a nice grocery store, brings it close to home, especially for a lot of people that have actively chosen to not take personal responsibility for their safety and well-being and that of their families. And yeah, all of a sudden that's scary, right? So obviously we need to pass some meaningless legislation or executive orders, which do nothing to actually address the underlying cause of violence and merely an attempt to address a single, very small facet with respect to the mechanism of violence. So maybe we can have less gun crime and then just have more knife crime like the UK because they have less gun crime and way more knife crime. Again, you're addressing the mechanism rather than the actual underlying cause, which I understand is uncomfortable. And at some point is probably going to take a really serious, long drawn out conversation within our nation and find out why people are nihilistic and in so much pain that they want to go out and share that pain and suffering. But I guess we're not ready to have that conversation. So what can be done? On the one hand, go ahead and over on Instagram or other places, follow SB Tactical. Amazing company that's done incredible things for the industry. And they eventually will have some guidance on how best to go about and essentially counter these infringements. Also, Firearm Policy Coalition. Amazing group doing some really good stuff with respect to Second Amendment rights, which end up protecting all those other amendments and all those other freedoms. But Firearm Policy Coalition does some amazing work. You can donate to them as well as Gun Owners of America, also doing some really good work. I would encourage you, if you value independence and freedom, to look to those guys and see what can be done because this attack continues to basically erode away our freedoms, which this aggression will not stand, man, in the words of the dude. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.